Next, I want to show you how to enter data into your access table. So we made a table in a previous video in design view. Now to uh, change the data in the table, you're going to double click on it. So we'll double click on the client's table. Okay. Now uh, each column is a different field and each row is a different record. Right now, this is a brand new table, so it doesn't have any data. But uh, of course, each row would be a different record and each column is a different field. If you look down here where my mouse is, it'll tell you how many records that you have in that table. First, we're on the customer ID field. Now, the customer ID happens to be one of those auto number fields. So, when it's an auto number field, it'll say the word new there. And in fact, you won't be able to type that. I'm going to try to type something in. And uh, notice nothing happens because it's an auto number field. So, um, if I try to type in there, nothing will happen. So, that's going to fill in automatically. The next field is called the start date. And with the start date, that's going to be a date time type of field. So uh, with a date time type of field, we can do it a couple different ways. We can enter the data manually. So I'll type in 12 slash 11 slash 10. I can type that in manually. Also, because it's a date field, they just included this calendar in the new version. So I want to pick on the calendar, and then we can pick a date from the calendar. So that's a nice feature. Now, uh, let me give you a keyboard shortcut here. Uh, if I do control semicolon, that gives you today's date. Today is November 12th, so if I do control semicolon, it gives me today's date as we can see. And when I leave that field, it lets me go to the next field. Now, let me show you what happens with the date if you type in an invalid date. I'm going to type in 11 slash 32 slash 2010. We know there's no such date as the 32nd of November. So when I try to leave that field, it knows as well. So it won't even let me continue until I pick in a proper value. So I'm going to type in enter new value, and then I'll type in, you know, 11, 12, 2010, and then it lets me continue. So when you have a date time field, it'll always make sure that you have a valid date that is built right in because it's a date time field. The first name is just a text field. Now a text field, you can just type in whatever you wanted to, and then you would tab to the next field. Also, if we hit the enter key, that would take you to the next field. So all of these are text fields. We're just going to type that in, and uh, I'm going to type in a, um, an address here. Now for the address too, let's say I don't have anything for that. I didn't make that field uh, a required field, so it's okay to leave that blank type in a city. These are all text fields. State. Now, when I set up the table, I made the state two characters long. So, it won't even let me try to uh, allow me to type in more than two characters, as we can see. So, that's one reason why we use the, um, the field size. For the zip code, we actually made that uh, nine digits with the dash. So, I'll type in one, two, three, four, five, dash, six, seven, eight, nine. By the way, if you wanted the dash to pop up automatically for that zip code field, you would, you would uh, add an input mask in design view into that field. There's another video that talks about input masks. Like for example, if I go to the phone number, if I start typing in my phone number, notice how the parentheses in the dash came up automatically. That's because we added a, a um, input mask to that field. And it makes it a lot easier to enter data there. Same thing with the fax number. We added a, um, an input mask for that field also. Now for the email address, I just made that a text field. Now if you wanted that to be an active uh, link, where if you clicked on that, you would, make it a, um, you would make it a hyperlink data type. Or another thing that you can do is you can just leave it as a text field then on the form, you can make that field a hyperlink. Uh, look for some videos about forms, and I will show you how to do that when we get to the form section. Now, notice that the active field is a checkbox. So the, um, the checkbox is, is there because we added a yes-no field. So if I click on that, of course, it makes it yes. The check mark is there. If I click again, it empties the field, and now it's no. So when the check mark is there, it means it's yes. 
when the check mark is not there, it means it's no. Another thing you could do is uh, if you use your space bar, I'm going to uh, hit the space bar and notice how that fills that in as well. So that's a yes no field. Now for the account limit, we made that a, um, a currency field. So when I type in this number, it, when I leave that field, it'll put the dollar sign in there automatically. Now, so I'm going to try to type in uh, my name. Now, it doesn't like that because it's not a numeric field. So that kind of that kind of validation is built right in because it's a, a currency field. That would also work if it was a number field. So I want to say enter new value, and we'll type in 20,000, let's say, as their limit. In the notes, we made that into a memo field. So we can just type in anything there. And we can type in as long as we want to. Actually, a memo field would, would contain up to 65,000 characters. So that's for your really, really long fields. And I'm just going to type in something there. Uh, so now notice how when I hit the tab key, it goes to the next record. Again, the customer ID is one of those auto numbers. So that's going to fill in automatically. Let's go to the next record and I'll put a date in. Use the calendar. And notice how that record became number two. So that's how the auto numbers are going to work. It's going to give you a different sequential number for each record. Uh, so there's going to be another video that I'll show you and to how to, on how to uh, make the auto number start from a different number from one. There is a way to do that. Uh, there'll be another video. Look for a video that features auto numbers. Okay. Now, um, so we'll just put another uh, record in here. Now let's, let me show you another keyboard shortcut. Let's say that this person has the same city as the previous per, uh, person. What you can do is you can, um, you can copy that value down by doing control quote, or you might say control apostrophe on your keyboard. And notice what that did, that copied the previous value down. I'm going to go to the state field, I'll do control uh, quote, and notice how to copy that previous uh, value from the previous record onto the current record. So that's a little bit of a keyboard shortcut. The other keyboard shortcut I, uh, that I talked about in this lesson was control semicolon, and that gave you today's date. So we can start to see how to do data entry into our table. Now, uh, a lot of these fields, I, I in fact, all of these fields I made as non-required. So I can skip right over those fields without typing anything in there. And that gives you a brief idea of how to do data entry into your table. I will probably talk about that more, but that gives you an introduction to doing data entry into your into your access table. And that would work with any existing table. Uh, at that point, I'm going to close that uh, table. And it saves for you automatically. If it doesn't ask you to save, it saves automatically. All right, so now we know a little bit about doing data entry into our access table.